Let us once again bring our attention to the chart. And this is also where glycine and N-acetylcysteine make their return appearance. And we're going to get back into the dosaging in reference to being utilized in regard to elevating glutathione levels in one of the other studies that you and I had reviewed earlier. But beside that, let us begin. What you are noticing right there is a strong correlation. I don't want to say causal as yet, a strong correlation in regard to the susceptibility of acquiring COVID-19 and not. And that correlation is directly drawn to glutathione levels in the body. Now, at the first line right there where I showed you, the blue line is there and the red line. The blue line is pointing towards the individuals between 21 and 40 that have healthy glutathione levels. Red line, obviously, the ones that do not. And the interesting part about it, this correlation between glutathione and basically COVID-19 susceptibility was pretty strong. There could be other confounding involved and so on and so forth. But however, though, it surprised the researchers because the researchers did not expect in those individuals between the ages of 21 to 40, especially to have COVID, COVID-19, but glutathione levels so dramatically low. In fact, as you look at the glutathione levels per se, let's say 41 over, there's not much of a difference between those that have acquired COVID-19 uh, between that 41 age, 41 to 60 age group and 60 and over. You notice those red dots. So the red dots go for the ones which are lower in COVID uh, glutathione, or I should say higher in COVID-19. And the blue line are for the ones that have the expected glutathione levels in the blood and those who have not acquired COVID-19. What I mean by acquire, we're not talking innate immunity or anything like that, a prior exposure or seroprevalence and so on and so forth. I'm just talking about acquiring it. What's the difference? Why do people get it? Uh, which comes first? Is it the low glutathione levels or is it basically the COVID-19 uh, causing low glutathione levels? The research didn't want to really dwell on that too much. They were more dwelling on the outcome of what happens when glutathione levels are low. And then basically go backwards and see basically if the uh, glutathione levels being low is what enables a person to acquire COVID-19, unfortunately, at an easier pace. But to proceed as follows with the research as we go. And COVID-19 patients have severely increased levels of oxidative stress and oxidant damage and glutathione deficiency. Patients hospitalized with COVID-19 had significantly increased levels of oxidative stress and oxidant damage and markedly reduced levels of glutathione, the most abundant physiological antioxidant according to the new study. Quoting, and the weird part about it too, you're going to think, well, why didn't mention glycine and acetylcysteine in the title? Don't know, but proceed. We are surprised, quoting, to see that COVID-19 patients in the 21 to 40 age range and the 41 to 60 groups had much less glutathione and more oxidative stress than the corresponding age groups without COVID-19, according to the researcher. We knew that healthy people without COVID-19 above the age of 60 years tend to be glutathione deficient and have elevated oxidative stress. Basically, we knew that healthy people without COVID-19 above the age of 60 Tend to be, uh, this should be tend to be not the wording reference that. However, when the 60 plus age group gets COVID 19, their glutathione levels were much lower and oxidative stress was much higher than those of similar age, but without COVID 19. So, as a person ages, the glutathione production tends to be less. So, they know that people at 60 year old tend to have lower glutathione levels. But, what happened was, due to the fact they have glute glute lower glutathione levels, makes them more susceptible to that bull in the china shop effect, per se, of COVID-19. But to proceed, this is an important new discovery, important new discovery. The finding that younger people with COVID-19 are also glutathione deficient, which has surprised them, and have elevated oxidative stress and oxidative damage is really surprising because we do not normally see these defects in younger age groups. 
These defects appear to be get progressively worse with increasing age, and the oldest patients with COVID-19 had higher levels of these defects in the outcomes. We propose that these changes might be involved in the disease. Now, we start leading ourselves to basically how they could possibly raise the glutathione levels. Again, correlation, but to proceed. Quote, our previous work has shown that increased levels of oxidative stress and reduced glutathione are not only present in older individuals or people, but also in people with HIV, a viral infection, and in patients with diabetes, which they're trying to say, look at this group. They're also more susceptible to COVID-19. Proceed. We also found that supplementing Glynac, a combination of glutathione precursors, improved these effects in all these populations. In addition, according to the researcher, his work revealed that supplementing Glynac to older people in HIV patients, ready for this? This is just their prior work in reference to glutathione, or I should say glycine and acetylcysteine, and acetylcysteine combination in regard to raising glutathione levels. But to proceed, reversed other abnormalities, including inflammation, endothelial dysfunction, insulin resistance, and improved muscle strength. Exercise capacity, almost ended it there, cognitive decline, gene damage, and body composition. Some of these defects have also reported in patients with COVID-19. Now, I'm gonna conclude with what they came to as well. Now, we do have one advantage. You and I on this channel, back in March of 2021, we reviewed uh, glycine and cysteine combination in regard to raising glutathione levels in help improving cognitive as well as muscle strength or ability. Now, the cool part about that, since we did this research back in March of 2021, March 30th, is that you and I can look at the dosaging that was used in that particular study, and you can draw your own correlation per se to proceed forward. Compare it and you understand exactly where I'm going with that. Compared to unaffected controls, COVID-19 patients of all groups had severe glutathione, GSH glutathione, deficiency, increased oxidative stress, and elevated oxidant damage, which worsened with advancing age. These defects are also present in younger age groups, the surprise, which they do not normally occur. Because Glynac, combination of glycine and acetylcysteine supplementation, has been shown in clinical trials to rapidly improve glutathione deficiency, oxidative stress, and oxidant damage, Glynac supplementation has implications for combating these defects in COVID-19 infected patients and warrants urgent investigation. And just in case, to reiterate, they are not making a recommendation. They are simply stating that it requires further investigation because the correlation is so strong. A, let's go for it, see what happens. Let's uh, run a trial with some glutathione and acetylcysteine and let us, let us explore the outcome. Now, back to March 30th, uh, as promised, we covered this back in March 30th, 2021. And the dosaging that they used in regard to elevating or improving cognitive ability and muscle strength was as follows. I know it is technical, but again, we're not here to make a recommendation. I'm just here to give an example of what was used in the past. Now, also too, many of you are asking, why is there not a gl uh, glycine and acetylcysteine combination on the marketplace? Well, part of that reason is as follows. This is, you know, I get this question a lot, but I want to take the courtesy to answer. And it goes as such. This is from the FDA review uh, advisory board. The FDA is requesting information relevant to the use of N-acetylcysteine as a dietary supplement. Well, the FDA is reviewing whether N-acetylcysteine, ironically, since 1963, whether N-acetylcysteine should even be in the marketplace. Not because of people being harmed or anything along those, that, along those lines. Simply because N-acetylcysteine uh, should stay classified as a drug as it was approved for in 1963 and they have no proof of it being approved as a dietary supplement since 1963. Now, there's your FDA 
uh, request for further information this November. And else, if you want to write the FDA in reference to it, please do. And here, this is nice because this little excerpt is from the National Law Review. And this gives you the exact rationale into the, uh, the FDA's insight into why, after all this time, N-acetylcysteine has caught their attention. And also why a lot of manufacturers are afraid to go into heavy production of glycine and acetylcysteine combination because the FDA is looking out for your best interest. Now, albeit, I find most individuals, the FDA and CDC, to be good people. The problem usually cures, 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 not a cures, occurs when there's a point D's. And the hardworking individuals of these organizations go through the daily work as time goes forward. It's the appointees, which have different agendas, which often sometimes cause collateral uh, uh, adhesion uh, to a lot of the individuals which are doing their job well day by day with the FDA and CDC. Look at the appointees. So when people like they discredit the FDA, that's like discrediting a whole slew of people. Often it's just the appointees to proceed. The product could not be lawfully marketed as a dietary supplement because think about it, all, all this time, now the FDA goes, hmm, NSL cysteine, what's wrong with that? Uh, finding no evidence that NAC was marketed as a dietary supplement or as a food prior to September 14th, 1963. So after 59 years, it caught the ride. When NAC was approved as a new drug, FDA concluded that NAC products are excluded from dietary supplement definition under Section 201, blah, 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 and the FDA Student Cosmetic Act working out for your best interest and safety. If you want to have, have fun uh, talking about approval process, how long the FDA takes, FDA takes, I would challenge any of you to please post in the comments how many years it will be before the Food and Drug Administration uh, releases the full documentation in reference to a uh, new slew of vaccines for COVID-19. You get a kick out of that. So again, the FDA itself is not necessarily known for its speed of processing. And uh, if anyone wants to find out, just again, when will the FDA fully release all the information in regard to how the documentation and the studies that it utilized to prove the COVID-19 vaccines? When will all the documentation be fully released? Please post in the comments. You'll get a kick out of that. But again, wonderful, wonderful research. Glycine and acetylcysteine, and as always, every single time, gratitude to the researchers. And as always, too, I'm very humbled that you watched. And again, it just looks really, really promising. Great correlation. Uh, glycine and acetylcysteine hold a lot of promise, uh, especially in reference to what the researchers are implying. And you saw everything they work with. So, it's pretty incredible. All right, teams. I'll catch you all in a bit. See you next time. Bye.